So you've come here for the truth. Well, we've got the truth and nothing but the truth. Here are your hosts, Robert A. Bianchi and David J. Bruno. And welcome to Nothing But The Truth on WMTR Radio every Saturday at 9.30. We are also streaming this broadcast on our LinkedIn page, our Facebook page, and our YouTube page. So you can check that out if you're not listening on them now, next week, and every week, you could watch the videos. Today, I I have an excellent guest, and I'm solo today. Bob Bianchi has some conflicts, but the show must go on, and we are back here, nothing but the truth, with Geraldine Spurway. And I'll tell you, I am so impressed by this individual. Uh, She is a business mentor, a performance coach, a speaker, a creative director, a market strategist, and a breath work facilitator. And I've been watching Geraldine for a while now on LinkedIn. And for anybody that's seen my platforms lately, you guys see, and I'm posting every single day consistently delivering value on LinkedIn. And Geraldine is one of the people that has influenced me in that way. Because that's where I see you, Geraldine. I see you on LinkedIn and you are relentless. You are nonstop. And what's amazing to me and what's what drew me to you is not only the value that you provide and the real life tools for people during overwhelm and stress with breath work, but also the community that you have. It is exceptional. The community that you have, the people that are engaging with your posts and communicate. It's like you could jump into a conversation. If I don't have anything to do, I could go on Geraldine's post for the day on LinkedIn and I could start engaging with your community. So well done, Geraldine. Uh, You are definitely a positive influence on me and a lot of your community. So I thank you for taking the time and coming on Nothing But The Truth. Welcome. That's an amazing introduction. I hope to be worthy of it. Um, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. And also, you know, you're, you're right. I've been posting relentlessly on LinkedIn um, for over a year now, although I've been slowing down the past three months to just, we'll, we'll get to that, but to look after my mental health and, you know, to leave a little bit more offline. But this is exactly why I do that. When I see people all over the world who message me and say that I positively influence them by showing up authentically and sharing um, nothing but the truth and also building in public. Um, that, that really huge my a huge smile on my face. Yeah, really, this is what I'm here for. Yeah, and I have the best community. These guys are amazing, yeah. You do, you do. And, and certainly you have tools available to your community. Talk a little bit about you know, what you're doing now, what you offer to business men and women and how you put yourself out there for your community. So I run two businesses. Uh, One is a marketing consultancy where I help um, senior executive, athletes, high performer, and entrepreneur on increasing the engagement with their audience online and offline in order to make an impact. Um, So obviously we're talking you know, strategic positioning, um, a lot of social media uh, training, and but also communication skills, how to show up online, how to speak, um, how to engage with your audience to really create the engagement, or to, to increase the engagement. And then on the back of that, I have my, my little baby, my well-being business, because um, I'm a therapist. I fell in a magic pot when I was um, 16 years old. My grandmother was a healer. And I've been training very early in age with holistic therapy, like um, energy healing. I was working with a shaman. I was working with a monk. And so I've been starting to push that side of my business called Resense, based on reactivating your five senses. Um, and essentially, it's a combination of energy healing and breath work. Awesome. And you guys hear her beautiful accent. She is also from London. She's in in London, UK. That's where she is. And there's a time difference. So definitely appreciate you accommodating me uh, this afternoon. So I, I love that you work with high profile individuals. I mean, because I think those are the people that probably are most self conscious about their image and their brand. And when we talk about authenticity and putting yourself out, Do you find that a lot of those individuals have some resistance, at least early on, 
to really put themselves out there? I completely. Uh, essentially, the, the type of client I work with um, are very high profile and they are already at the top. So they are somehow fitting within the box and they know the people watching them have expectation. Um, and my work when I work with them is literally to make them go back to their authentic self. Like when I work with women who are at the top, they're very much in the masculine energy, um, fitting, um, you know, very, very, not smiling a lot, not very soft. And we really work on getting the goddess back within them and getting a little bit um, softer in the way they communicate, in the way they approach um, the people they work with, the people they talk to, but also the way they dress or the way that they, they, they tell their story. Um, and I work when I work with men, I mean, you've been following me on Instagram as well. And one of the first thing I do with, with them at the very top is addressing their lifestyle, the way they eat, put them on a diet, stop the booze and all of that. Because when they are at the very top, they happen, most of them are very lonely. They work a lot, long hours, mm. and they just forget to take, to take care of, you know, of themselves. And this is where I come in. Oh, I could so relate to this too. I mean, my TEDx talk that I did was on overwhelm and stress and a trajectory that I was on in my career all the way up to COVID. And that was my aha moment. It was at a point, it was like courthouses shut down, phone stopped ringing, and I start learning about business. I start learning about landing pages and growing a business. And I come to find out a lot of it is on mindset. Mindset, nutrition, rest, habits, tools, things like that, meditation, breath work that you're a specialist in. But Geraldine, I mean, was it always like this? Did you always have this mindset? Or was there a transformational point in your life as well to bring you to this place? It was nearly always like this because I am 45 years old. Um, when I was 16, I started suffering from depression. Um, and I wa when I was 20, the day of my 20th birthday, I tried to commit suicide. Oh. And basically, um, the person who saved me was a monk. My parents took me to him. He was an acupuncture. And he just got me into these words of meditation, mantra, visualization. And this is how um, I literally saved my, my own mind from, you know, the, the, the trauma I was in, the depression and all of that. So, you know, when people say to me, have you always been like that? Yes, I've always been a high achiever. I've always been very sporty. I've always been very driven. But since I've been 20 years old, I'm meditating every day. And meditation is not only when you don't have to sit quietly. You can meditate in the tube. You can meditate on your bike. I cycle 45 minutes every day. I do spinning every day. This is how I meditate. Uh, you don't have to stick to the stigma of being silent. There, there's so many, so many different ways to meditate. So yeah, the shift was for me 25 years ago. Wow. And it's true. When, when, when they say your mess is your message. Um, a lot of people and the lessons that they've learned in their lives are great lessons moving forward to others, you know? And so, look, I, I didn't know that about you. I did not know that about you. You you had a good job, right? Everything, I guess, could everyone see from afar, like thinking that everything was great for you, but up here you were dealing with your own issues? Yeah, I was only 20, so it was different uh, when this happened. I didn't have a good job. I was at uni, I uh, was doing a business school, and I had been assaulted. And that uh, really put me in, into sort of a depression state. And, mm. and, and then, you know, when you're 20, you're very young. And I don't think at this stage, we're talking 25 years ago, we didn't really talk about mental health. It was... You know, you couldn't talk about it. You couldn't talk about your emotions. Um, and then I guess, you know, one day I decided to to do, you know, to to, meet, to, to end this all. Um, but I'm so grateful. This is something I'm, I'm very comfortable talking about. And this is why I make so many, I have so many talk about, I'm invited to so many talks about mental health and everything because um, I wish, you know, all these tools I'm teaching now to high uh, profile or to to adults, I wish it was taught at school because 
I have a little girl, she's nine, and when she gets overwhelmed and anxious, I'm always getting her to breathe and to visualize and to slow down. I'm not saying it works necessarily on the moment, but the other night she said to me, you know, I've tried. She was crying because she was upset about something. And she was like, you know, I've been trying to do the, the breath work. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. But it was so funny because whether it works or not, she tried to do it. So she already knows that she has some tools in her and one day she will make it work. So, um, yeah, that, that, that's really, that was my shift. I wasn't unhappy. I just had a trauma that triggered something that made me unhappy. Wow. And it was a monk that really helped you change at that yeah. time. Yeah, I was an exceptional man. That's amazing. And I, and I will say too, um, you know, as a prosecutor and in the criminal defense world I'm in, and I represent victims uh, as well that, that have been abused and assaulted and need protections and things like that. You know, at some point there, there is help out there through psychologists and psychiatrists and medicine and medication. That's, that's one side of things. And at some points you do have to go to the professionals for that help. What we're talking about today is we're talking about breath work and, and tools and things. We're going to take a break. Uh, we're going to go into a commercial. Thank you for listening to Nothing But The Truth. I'm David Bruno, and we'll be back after the commercial. At the Bianchi Law Group, our team of former prosecutors and certified criminal trial attorneys specialize in criminal defense and domestic violence cases. When you need a law firm with courage, compassion, and the commitment to fight for you, call the Bianchi Law Group today. And we're back. Nothing But The Truth. I'm David Bruno. Um, thank you for the story and and definitely your moment, your transformational moments in those early years. Um, and I know looking back, how does that experience uh, and what you went through put you in a place now to help others? I think when you go through things in your life that uh, makes you hit from bottom, there's only two ways. Either you keep sinking, either you go back up. And in my case, I remember at that time I was feeling really low vibe, as you can imagine. And I went to see this, this little old psychic and, and I was feeling so sad. And I said to her, I don't understand. Why am I feeling so miserable? Why am I suffering so much? And she said to me, you know, one day you will be helping people because you can only help others when you went through what you're going through, when, you, when you've been hurt, when you went through difficulties in life and when you're on the other side and this is how you help others and you will be a healer and you will be helping people. And this is something that stayed in my life, in my head, sorry, ever since. And every time I go through something um, that is a little bit difficult, like we all do like during COVID and everything, and I always remind myself that either I'm going to sink Either I can only back, you know, get back up. And uh, when I'm on the other side, there's always a learning. There's always a story to share for me. So, um, you know, when we are in that difficult moment, what I would like to share with people is that it's very difficult to get your head out of the water. You feel like you're sinking. But just know that at some point, the more you release the resistance, the easier it gets. And when mm. it gets easier, this is how you find the solution. And what are some actions that people could take when they're in that moment and it feels like the world is on their shoulders and just things aren't going right and the double stacking and the rumination and the negative self-talk happening? What are some tools that you found and you teach about to deal with people in those positions? So the first thing I like to address is that people are always saying you could be whoever you want to be. You can do whatever you can do. That's not true. When you're feeling crap, you cannot. There is literally, this is impossible for you to feel that you're going to get better. So the first step is to accept and acknowledge that you're feeling crap. And what I advise my clients is actually to honor their pain and just to literally, um, I call it a sushi roll. You put yourself on the sofa, you put a very sad music or a very sad movie and you get yourself into a very sad, deep state where you release and when you cry and when you cry. Why? Because at the end of the day, when the movie is finished or, or when the music, the very sad movie is I stopped playing, you, you're feeling empty, but tears are very cathartic. 
So once you've acknowledged that state where you're feeling crap and you've cried your soul out, you move. You literally get out of the house and you move. If you don't like running, then you walk or you do some uh, star jumps, like simple star jumps at home. But you literally move your body, right? Because when you move, you create some sort of dopamine effect and you, you, you get your heart pumping and you're, you, you just suddenly tap it to your subconscious mind and you, you're sort of be receiving information that you don't have access to when you're in that deep frozen state when you feel everything is collapsing around you. And once you moved, you just literally close your eyes. You put a nice music if you want to. You could do it in silence. You open up your chest as much as you can, and you really breathe deeply in and out from your mouth, from your nose. Then you breathe very deeply as if you wanted your, your chest to expand. You fill up your lungs with so much hair, and then you empty it until there's nothing left. And you do that for five minutes. And if you manage to do that, you should already feel better. Okay. But then what, right? What actions? Because I'd imagine, and I'm not a specialist in this area, I'm a trial lawyer, but I have found value in some of my habits, journaling, meditation, breath work, prayer, things like that. What do you suggest uh, is next after you accept, after you get sad, after you take action with movement and then that breath work exercise? What's next, Geraldine? I think everybody needs a routine. So I don't recommend to everyone to wake up at 5 a.m. to go spinning and then you have a protein shake and then to work because it doesn't sit for everyone. Some people like to work out at night. So you need mm. to understand how your body works. But one of the things I really recommend is first thing in the morning to not look out for your phone in the first half an hour, which we are all guilty. I have been guilty of it for so long. And what I do now, I leave my phone out of the bedroom. This way, I'm not tempted to do it. So we're so addicted to this electronic thing that it just completely messed up with our mind. You just forget to think. So if you put the phone in the kitchen or anywhere else and you allow yourself just just so what I do, I literally get out of the, my my bed because I'm the first one to, to get ready. I go to the gym every morning. I splash my head, my face, sorry, with cold water. I don't have a shower that first hour because I have my shower in the evening. Then I put my trainers on, but what I'm, everything is ready the day before. So there's no thing that stops me from doing it. It's, it's just all ready for me. I put my leggings, I put my trainers, I put my hoodie. I have a small decaf because I don't have coffee. And then I go, I walk for half an hour to go to the gym. Then I do my 45 minutes spinning. During that time, I do my meditation and I breathe, I do my breath work. I combine everything for 45 minutes. And then when I go back on the way back, I start looking at my emails and my messaging, but only then. And it's usually 8.15, which means I wake up at a quarter to six and for two hours, I haven't touched my phone. And then when I go back home, I have a shower, always starting with two minute cold shower. I haven't been able to go up to three at the moment, but anyway. And then if you can, if you can, I'm very much into fasting. Why? Because two years ago when I was trying to repair my broken shoulder, I went fasting for a full week and I was only allowed to have, it was um, water and one juice a day. I've never had so much clarity in my life than when I fasted. So from Monday to Friday, I have an eating window, which is between 2 p.m. and 6 to 7 p.m. That's it. And on Saturday and Sunday, you'll see me eating the most horrendous thing. I really enjoy everything. But from Monday to Friday, I fast. Why? Because when you fast, you are not using your digestive system to produce energy. And you, can just, you get so much more clarity. You, you're much more focused. Your skin is glowing. Your, your tummy is flat. You get much more energy. Um, and when you get more clarity, more energy, you feel better in yourself then it has an effect on your mood, on your mindset, on everything else. So to your answer, what would you do? I would change my routine because if you're doing something that is not working and that makes you miserable, whether you're not finding love, whether you're not finding the right job, whether you're not making the right money, whether your kids annoy you or your house is a mess, then you need to change who you are to create a new reality. And that starts by defining new habits. Oh, I, I love that, especially that morning routine. Um, I recently heard Mel Robbins talk about this, 
And she talks about being the first voice that you hear in your day, right? Because sometimes when you roll over and you go right to that other voice, you're watching and you're listening and you're seeing other people, that's the first voice. And it's all about really setting the day up, teeing it up, laying the, setting the table. Um, and I share with that. That was one of the biggest changes that I made um, when I changed the way I looked at things is that morning routine. And I start too with affirmations. All right. Do you use affirmations? Do you come up with things to say to yourself about goals? Uh, all the time. So I use affirmation with tapping. So I don't know if you're familiar with EFT. Um, it's essentially a tool and that activates some meridians in your body and that re like rewire your brain through positive affirmation, but through, first of all, acknowledging what is not working and transforming it into uh, your vision. And anytime I want to manifest new clients, manifest more money, I go into tapping mode or, you know, rewrite my thoughts, my thoughts. So yeah, I tap all the time and it could very much be doing, um, I'm attracting more money. I'm manifesting more abundance into my life and you tap everywhere and you just like you just get you into a really good flow and yeah all the time yeah the flow i mean being in a flow state is another thing that's that's super important and you know to your point find out what works for you i mean for for Jeladin, that's what she does in the morning my mine is very similar I do the exercise in the morning too. I, I feel like it's rocket fuel for the day. But other people do different things in, in the uh, nighttime. What about nighttime? How about winding down and really setting the tone for a good night's rest? What do you recommend for the evening hours? So I'm not a good example um, in full transparency because as an entrepreneur, you work all the time. So mm. I am really, really not an example to follow um i usually stop working between five and eight nine i put my daughter to bed sometime at 9 p.m i actually love working this is when i'm in creative mode i'm right i write a lot as you know and this is where my mood is like i write i write i write i channel a lot but i would strongly recommend if you can so at 10 i stop <laughs> this is at 10 i go down and i watch either Stereo Netflix for an hour, either a documentary that I like, either I take a book. Um, I'm a night old, so I never go to bed before midnight. So this is me. I don't need a lot of sleep. Um, but I would recommend to always make sure that you allow yourself some time that is not allocated to work, to housework, or to your kids. Just a moment for yourself. And when people say, oh, I don't have time. I don't believe it. You create the time. Uh, even if it's 15 minutes reading, you know, I have so many books and I have to finish this book by the end of the, of the week. I don't know I'm going to do that. Um, but even if it's reading two, three pages for, for 15 minutes and being very conscious, I really recommend to everyone every night to never go to bed without being able to say, okay, if tonight was the last day on this earth, where I'm breathing, am I happy? Did I do something for myself? Mm. And that is something I do all the time. I'm like, was there anything today that made me happy? Whether it was reading, a conversation with a friend, an amazing coffee or some chocolate. I always try to find you know, the gratitude thing, but more was there a moment during that eight hours, 12 hours where I felt so happy that my heart exploded. And if I don't have that, then I make a conscious decision the following day to balance that again. Now, one, one of your specialties is breath work. And I, I do not want to end this show without talking about some tools that people can use in their daily lives uh, with, with their breath work. Can you just give the audience a little background and then maybe some, some tools to use in those moments of stress? So breath work to me, I've always been doing breath work and visualization uh, before it became so famous. But three years ago, um, someone was raving about a technique and, and I was like, I have to try. And I tried breath work and he didn't like it. I was like, it's not doing it to me. I saw all these people Ugh. and, and actually I tried again and finally I got it. Um, so the reason why I think breath work is so important is 
from a scientific perspective, it enhances performance. There is a reason why it is being taught to have kids. It's because it oxygen your muscle. Everything is is it go through the breath that's the first thing you do when you come into this earth and that's the last thing you you ever going to do when you leave this earth so the thing that people do when they are stressed out and essentially because we're always on our phone we are like that meaning we do not breathe look we can't breathe we're just like that mm. so i always when i teach my client breath work essentially the first thing i do is teach them the po posture to bring your shoulder back essentially for all the women who've had a baby we have a tendency because of the tummy for it just so to open up your chest and even for men when they're aging they put a little bit on the tummy so that they have a tendency to, to crush like that so i always um invite my client to open up their chest really as if you wanted your your backbone to touch it together and to put one hand on your on your heart and one hand on your tummy and one of the most powerful um technique to breathe um is to breathe first through your tummy then up to your chest and up through your, through your mouth, meaning that you're going to visualize like a wave filling up your tummy with hair. So it does like that. And then you inhale into your breast and then you exhale through your mouth. So it's a two-part inhale, one-part exhale. So that's kind of the, the, one, of the, one of the techniques that I used. But if you just want to really breathe mindfully, one of the techniques that everybody's talking about is Breathing in for seven seconds, holding your breath for six seconds, and breathing out for five seconds. So basically, we want people to be very mindful of the way they breathe. So it's not so much about just breathing through your nose, which we all do. It's being able to breathe through both your mouth and your nose, because there's actually, I'm reading a fascinating book, um, Science about, about it, like why do we need to breathe through our mask? An experiment has been done where when you have both of your nostrils closed, um, it actually creates an amazing thing within your brain. So I can't explain because I'm still in the middle of the book, but it's, mm. it's quite intense. Um, but tools will be open up your chest, really put both of your fins on the ground, one hand on your chest, one hand on the tummy, and really... Pay attention to where the air, the air is coming into your body and coming out of your mouth. And the more you're going to get yourself into when you, you know, when you're getting stressed out, when something is happening to you, instead of, you know, hyperventilating, like, oh, I'm out of breath and feeling your, your, your chest being tied up, just changing your posture and taking big inhale and big exhale. You could do it with me. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> and then it literally within five minutes you're gonna feel so much better you'll be like why didn't i do this before mm. it's so easy why am i not doing this it doesn't need to be complicated i feel breathwork is over complicated these days it's just just breathe and like yeah. wim hof says whatever the hole that's what he says just breathe open up and breathe open up and breathe there you go and you know what the awareness to posture is so important because we're in front of computers, we're hunched over, we're in these chairs, I'm in this chair now. And just when you started to talk about that, I kind of sat up a little bit, put your, and you, I realized that too. I mean, what great advice, practical advice that everyone could take and use. Uh, Geraldine Spurway, it has been an absolute pleasure, uh, exceeded my expectations. I knew exactly that you would be great. And that is the show. Uh, nothing but the truth today with your host, Dave Bruno. I'm in solo today. Bob's uh, conflicted out today. But you guys know where it's at. It's nothingbutthetruthpodcast.com. That's where the webpage is. Also streaming live. And I can't wait for this week's stream because it's Saturday at 9.30 a.m., Geraldine. And I know that your community is going to want to hear you this weekend. So we'll get that link out to my community and your community so everyone can listen. And if they miss it live, the beauty of LinkedIn Live is that you could watch that all day in the future. So with that being said, nothing but the truth. Dave Bruno, Geraldine, last thoughts before we end. Live like tomorrow never dies. Live like tomorrow never dies. Great advice, Geraldine. Thank you again. 
and I'll see you later. Thank you for having me, David. Thank you. We're the Bianchi Law Group, a team of former prosecutors and certified criminal trial attorneys. But here's the thing. He put himself in a box when he said... My Relied on by me. CNN, Fox News, MSNBC, Law and & Crime, and news leaders across the country for our criminal defense expertise. You a search warrant. You have to have probable cause that a crime's been committed and there's evidence in a particular place. When you need a law firm with courage, compassion, and the commitment to fight for you, Call the 